We're getting pretty dang close to the launch for Monsters of Drakenheim, the Dungeon Dude's third installation to their award-winning campaign setting. I'm not jealous. This fat stack of over 300 pages, bound with art of a dude who's for sure about to die, is full of awesome crazy threats. Unless that's Pluto Jackson. I don't know what equipment he has now. We're jumping back into a spell-plagued world thanks to Delirium, an alien metal that warps the hearts of minds and men, and the bodies of monsters because it's radioactive. Which is why we're getting over 150 new ones come March 26th. If you click the link in the description before then, and you back the campaign, you get a free set of monster dice. That's a value of like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks? But they're VIP dice, so 2 million dollars. Uh, yeah, here's a Logan video. Welcome to a video about Infernal Machines, the soul field hell cars inspired by a Chexy mix of Mad Max, Ghost Rider, and Speed Racer, specifically the 2008 film. Pankuchen sind Liebchen. Pancakes are love. These things rip and tear through the empty cracked dunes and raging bloody battles of Avernus, mounted by sinister warlords ranging from horned devils to bitter necromancers. But us as dungeon masters like to dig our grubby little fingers into new ideas and slap them onto our worlds. After all, having Hot Wheels on the combat board is pretty... I want to do that. Infernal machines are constructed through the various nine hells, most of them used in relation to the active blood war that plagues Avernus. There's also another one this crazy French dude used to assassinate a king. It was just 25 guns duct taped together. Killed 22 people, missed the king. Ain't that a fun gun fact? The smallest of the Infernal Machines, other than that one and this one, is the Devil's Ride. This Ghost Rider demon bike is used for recon and scouting, moving at a stupid fast 120 feet per turn, which I think is a cozy 80 miles per hour. You can do tricks on it, or wipe out and go flying. Fun. Then you've got the Tormentor, which is basically a dune buggy, so I'm gonna show you some of Jack 3. I used to suck at these racing segments. I still do. The Tormentor also has crazy big spikes to chop through enemy lines. Then there's the absolutely ridiculous Demon Grinder. It's got a wrecking ball, dump truck teeth, and harpoons. I think this just fucks around and mows down demons. Reminds me of the wheelchair from Dead Rising. Last from the main crew is the Scavenger, a comfortable mobile home in the wastes of hell whose main purpose is to scavenge and salvage scraps from the edges of battlefields. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say maybe they salvage parts to make more infernal machines. Honorable mentions include the Merry Widow, Hell's Bell, Buzz Killer, and of course, Carlock from Emperor's Gate 3. She's a unique case and experiment conducted by Zariel and an unknown engineer. They dumped her heart and traded up for a multi-piston motorcycle engine just, just to see what it would do. The biggest problem with this model is that you can't ride it. It rides you. Gods, I wanna ride you till you see stars. Seems like the program initially worked well, so there might be more humanoid infernal machines just running around, wreaking havoc. I also drummed up some blueprints for my own infernal machines. The Violator, the Floater, the War Ender, the Misdirector. The secret to this one is that one of the guys riding it is holding a gun. These things don't take gasoline though. There's no crude oil in hell. I mean, why do you think Americans want to avoid it so bad? Instead, they're fueled with the agonizing, screaming, minted souls of the damned. Enter the soul coin. One of the countless horrible fates that a damned soul could meet. And one of the tastiest cookies you could give Carlock. That last soul coin was just what I needed. I feel incredible. Check this out which I never did because I always forgot to and the buff isn't even that strong. This currency is printed by Mammon. One of the richest and most powerful men on the planet. Hello. <laughs> this secret process takes a mortal soul, either from a devil deal breaker or the victim of numerous night hags that visit hell, and seals it inside a five inch wide coin. On, on average, 5.1 inches I think. Devils trade these coins like Pokemon cards, because when you're holding one, you can feel that soul's presence and ask it stuff. But every infernal machine requires energy, and these souls can be dropped into an arcane cabinet style coin slot and burned up into horrendous oblivion. Hey pops, does this thing work? Sure does. I just oiled it. Beautiful. 
Give it up, baby. Over the next 24 hours, the infernal machine is fully operational as this thing burns, and the engine rumbles like your fucking neighbor's supercar with the muffler removed, while at the same time screaming in human agony. Since, you know, a soul is literally being burned up and destroyed in the same way that a lich would eat it. Once the car stops, not even God can bring that guy back. But honestly, one pit stop for a 24-hour road trip is nothing to sneeze at. As an homage to Mad Max, you can spray demon juice into the furnace to perform a fucking coup de burst. I would not put demon bile in my mouth to spit it out though, I think my lips would just melt off. Have you ever thrown up bile? It's fun. While driving these mammoth mobiles, you'll come to realize that they're not immune to flat tires, or broken steering, dropping armor, busted axles, malfunctioning weapons, and flipping over. They might even drive like Death Stranding. Get over the ramp. Here we go. So repairs are a whole ordeal. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about stealing one. In the normal lore, commandeering and operating one is a very difficult task. First, you gotta essentially heist a moving war beast covered in people that operate it, kill them all while dodging nonsense weapons like demolition balls and bladed forklifts, then get it to stop by using archaic controls. Once you've figured out where the gas lever is, the fidget spinner that functions as the brakes, and the steering dial, you're set to roam the Badlands. In place of infernal coins, sometimes these are equipped with weapons that just soak up the souls of anything they can kill. In combat, the driver at the helm can use their action to stop the car, Tokyo Drift, or do any other cool stuff that the car can do, like swing weapons around or crush somebody. I like that. Also, when you're not driving, it just keeps going. The car continues forward in a straight line until it either burns up Old Man Jenkins' soul or slams into something big enough to stop it. The book has mechanics for chase complications, and it seems like more than anything, D&D wants to break into that stereotypical car chase territory that every movie has. It doesn't work great, but with good dungeon master pacing and a good playlist, you could have an absolutely amazing scene with infernal machines tearing through a valley blowing each other up. Lastly, now that you know what they are, you can change them up. The book has suggestions like flamethrowers, bile spewers, fancy golden armor, but anything you strap to the side of a war car counts as a weapon if it can hurt someone. When I inevitably introduce these cars to my party, half of them are gonna look like battle bots from the old TV show. Like how I strapped this to my devil's ride. I'm out of here and I'm, I'm taking this video with me. Mm -hmm.